Yeah, so it's rare you get a question that you've actually not thought of. I never thought what would happen if he didn't die. I guess you take for granted a ghost story, the, that's the one prerequisite, that the ghost has to be dead. Um, so was his death inevitable? Um, could the story, could he have learned these lessons if he had lived? Um, well, I'm not sure. I mean... <laughs> I, uh, I took it that he was dead at the beginning and that was the premise. And, um, and I also think the, the way, without giving away too many spoilers, the, the, the person or persons or uh, creatures or entities that were responsible for his death, um, the, the, the motives behind it, I think once you find that out, they're quite understandable in, in the sense that um, Mali was playing with fire all throughout his life, uh, putting himself in dangerous situations, dealing with shady characters. So I think that's, I think he did have to die for the narrative purpose because it's also, when you see the, hopefully it's a surprise who, uh, who ends up killing him and the motives. But when you see that, I think that tells a lot more about Sri Lanka and how people were killed and why and some of the reasons would surprise you. So I think for narrative, it had to work. So I bought a bunch of show and tell. So obviously the first one, uh, Uncle Kurt, who, um, I mean, I've written about uh, why he was such an influence, but, uh, and this lady here, Margaret Atwood, uh, William Goldman, um, and Stephen King, uh, when I was researching horror, these are, these are the guys who, um, I want to read everything they've ever done. And I think mainly because they're, they're all like big ideas writers, but their books are quite readable, even though they're full of these big concepts. And I think that's the thing I aspire to. But um, with this book specifically, the things I read uh, were um, uh, Cloud Atlas, I uh, read that many times, watched the film. Uh, I know some people say it's confusing, but those people are wrong. Um, and this one, Lincoln in the Bar. Bardo, um, which won the Booker Prize, and I was while I was writing this, I thought, is there room for another talking ghost book? But uh, I thought, why not? Um, and uh, and of course, uh, Sandman for the world building. Uh, um, yeah, this is the kindly ones, uh, the one with the most story. But yeah, I just kind of absorbed a lot of all this stuff. Um, so mix of literary and so I, I guess more traditional fantasy. Um, but I think. Um, a lot of the, these guys are my favorite writers because of, um, yeah, what I said before, they can talk of big ideas in simple language and talk of grim, grim concepts and grim situations with dark gallows humor. And that's, uh, that's something that I've always tried to do. So this is one thing that, uh, I mean, I, I started writing this quite a while, 2014, 2015. Perhaps if I started writing it now, I, I would pause a bit because now there is that question of permission. Uh, are, are you allowed to write from the point of view of a uh, closeted gay man uh, if you're a cisgender, hetero, uh, normative male? or uh, um, Yeah, and so, but at the time I did it not as a political statement because I don't think it's a particularly, it's a... I wouldn't claim it's an LGBTQ novel or even the fact that he's a gay character is much of a, 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 a thematic thing. It's more of a plot thing. But I think it came from, I did model it on uh, Richard de Soisa. I did model Marley on Richard de Soisa. And though Richard de Soisa was an activist and a thespian and this guy turned out to be a war photographer and a gambler. But the fact that they were both uh, closeted gay men in the late 80s... Uh, that, that was something that stayed with each revision. And I think it just made sense to me um, that that would explain some of the reason for some of his decisions to go into these situations, into these dangerous parts of the country. Because perhaps he felt he couldn't be himself in Colombo, that he had to go out station where no one knew him in order to express himself sexually, as well as professionally to take, take the photograph. So it just, just seemed to make sense. And I also I think... When I write in the first person or the second person, like like with the first book when I wrote in the first person, you always need a detail so that you're not basically making them a mouthpiece for your emotions and thoughts. And I think in the first book, I made the character twice twice my age and a lot more conservative. So you're sort of entering that, that uh, view of the world. And I think here, the fact that he was a closeted gay man, it made me 
use my imagination and inhabit another life. And I think, uh, yeah, it just, it wasn't something I thought too deeply of, but I tried to be honest to his relationships and to uh, how he viewed himself sexually. But no, it wasn't making a big statement on on yeah, LGBTQ issues in Sri Lanka. And I, 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 mean, I don't know if I'd be qualified to do that. And if I did that, I think I'd take that a bit more seriously. This was, this was more murder mystery and this just happened to be a de detail about the character. So yeah, that was one brick at a time. I, I, I borrowed from a lot of mythologies and um, also near-death experiences, talking about walking into the light and also yeah, the idea of seven days that the spirit hovers around for seven days, you see that in different forms of Buddhism and, and other Eastern religions. Um, but I think the real breakthrough was seeing the afterlife as um, as a visa office, as a government bureaucracy, where spirits are wandering around not knowing quite where they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to be doing in these seven moons. And it just made sense to me that uh, we, we have this illusion that all the aunt all the questions will be answered when we breathe our last, that you close your eyes, open them, and then suddenly it all makes sense. And it made more sense to me that you'll be absolutely more confused when you when you wake up. You're not sure why you're there and when you're, you've got memories of your past. And, and maybe that is a plausible explanation for why Sri Lanka seems to go from tragedy to tragedy, that there are all these restless spirits and ghosts wandering around, confused, not sure what they're supposed to do, and they amuse themselves by whispering bad ideas into people's ears and so once I stumbled on that it was absurd enough and it had its own logic as well that I thought um, this this is a useful way of exploring this grim subject matter but having a bit of lightness and a bit of playfulness also so um, but yeah the, the answer to the question is it took a while to build but uh, uh, I think I, I started believing it and became convincing and uh, it's, it seemed a good chaos in which to tell the story from. Yes, yeah, so um, I had to think about this because I was, um, one, one common bit of feedback is that the protagonist isn't very likable and none of the main characters are, and I think that's, that's perhaps fair. Um, but hopefully I made them sympathetic and believable and authentic, but yeah, I'm not sure, you know, I'd want to hang out with any of these characters. Unlike the first book, W.G. and his uh, drunken uh, uh, cricket buddies were kind of lovable rogues and there was, a f I don't know if, there are a lot of the characters here are quite self-centered and uh, uh, quite selfish, and yeah, I, I don't know if you're on board with them. So, if anything, I would relate to some of the ghosts. I did enjoy writing and hanging out with some of the ghosts, especially the dead leopard who turns up towards the end of the book but makes cameos throughout. And I'd argue he, the dead leopard, was one of the heroes of the story. Um, and also the minor characters, the kind of the lower level cops, the body disposers, the thugs who are doing some pretty gruesome things. But you, I, I, I also related to you're, you're, you're just following these orders that you do not agree with, but you, have, you just have to get them done. Working, you know, weekends on pictures in advertising, not quite the same as body disposal, but you sort of feel you're doing this horrible job and you don't know to appease someone up there and uh, you really need the money. And uh, so maybe... Those are the characters that I could uh, relate to more. Um, but, yeah, I liked all of them. I, I just wouldn't hang out with any of them. Um, I, I'm going to show this off as well. I got some more books. So I, I managed to get this on eBay for um, less than their worth. But these Choose Your Own Adventures... I got a bunch of an original set of these books, and I bring these up for the the second person. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers these books, but they were pretty big in Colombo during the 80s when the war was going on. And um, they're not quite as great as I remember them, but I do remember it was quite innovative at the time that you had all these, uh, and they're quite pulpy, and, and they had this great kind of artwork. You can't, yeah, you can only find them on eBay. I think they're out of print and stuff, but... The second person and these multiple endings. So I, yeah, this was quite a find and um, uh, sharing it with my kids. But I remember I, I went through all of that. And when I came to 30 years later writing in the second person, I think this would definitely be a direct influence. You wake up with the answer to the question that everyone asks. The answer is yes. 
The answer is just like here, but worse. That's all the insight you'll ever get. So you might as well go back to sleep. You were born without a heartbeat and kept alive in an incubator. And even as a fetus out of water, you knew what the Buddha sat under trees to discover. It is better to not be reborn. Better to never bother. Should have followed your gut and croaked in the box you were born into. But you didn't. So you quit each game they made you play. Two weeks of chess, a month in Cub Scouts, three minutes in rugby. You left school with a hatred of teams and games and morons who valued them. You quit art class and insurance selling and master's degrees. Each a game that you couldn't be asked playing. You dumped everyone who ever saw you naked, abandoned every cause you ever fought for, and did many things you can't tell anyone about. If you had a business card, this is what it would say. Mali Almeida, photographer, gambler, slut. If you had a gravestone, it would say Malinda Albert Cabalana, 1955 to 1990. But you have neither. And you have no more chips left at this table. And you now know what others do not. You have the answer to the following questions. Is there life after death? What's it like?